So I have this running on the background when I'm trading and I'm not even looking at the chart, I'm looking at this chart because I just like the computer to announce the strength of the bar. And if you look at the configuration for this indicator, it has a lot of alerts you see here from here. What TradeStation does is that it reads these phrases, reversal up, reversal down, strong buy, strong short, weak buy, weak short, bad buy, bad short. Bad buy is a bull bar with a bear body. Bad short is a bear bar with a bull body. So weak, short, and these are used for counter trend scalping. Outside, inside, 2cc buy, 2cc short, bull ii. And it's funny that in TradeStation, if you just write i, like the letter i, it will pronounce it in a very unintelligible way. So you have to say i, i, say it for the computer to read it properly. Bear i, i, outside, outside bar, outside, outside, buy and sell short. There are 16 different bar types and combinations here that I don't have to look for because the computer will do the math and read it out for me. So that's a, you know, workload reducer, really. The interesting thing that comes out of this is an understanding of how to classify bars based on the size of their tails, which is important, especially if, you know, you're not doing this as a fun, you know, workload reducer algorithm, but really as part of an, another more serious type of code that really depends on bar strength to make other decisions, then there are different ways to do this. One is based on the size of the tail, which is this one. Method one is based on tick. So for example, if I change these values, the tail size you see here, tail, tail, tail. So tail strong ball one, tail weak ball three. So what this means is if the bar has a one tick tail, it's still considered strong. If it has three or more tick tail, then it's not considered that strong. Based on the present configuration, the really strong bar, like this light green bar, is a bar that has a very small tail, a one tick tail. The other one, this one, is a bar that has more than one tick tail, but it is still a, a fairly large bar, strong bar. The problem with that is when volatility changes, then this defin definition doesn't stand because everything is relative. And as soon as you put some absolute value on something, then that thing becomes limited in functionality. Therefore, the better way really is to base it off of the percentage value compared to the rest of the bar. So if you use method two, use IBS as our differentiator, then the algo will not look at these ones but we'll look at these ones. IBS is strong. So now you can say tail is a function of the range of the bar with the percentage value, 90, 75. So this is more usable as far as not having to tweak things all the time because volatility changes and sways your tail size. All right, now you see that these other bars that are still strong and they were not found by just measuring it based on absolute size of tail, they are found now. It's important because if you look at this chart from this point of view, it gives you a lot of interesting information. For example, what happens if I buy and sell only the bars that are relatively strong, not perfectly strong because those perfect bars, as you see, there are not too many, but the second degree bars, which are these dark green ones and orange bars are actually fairly frequently happening. Let's just do the tally and see what happens. And we can also put this on Globex chart because this is not dependent on any history. It's just based on one bar. Therefore, it's independent of Globex. Let's use this day, for instance. All right, so this is magenta. And first bar is a reversal bar. It's blue color and it is a strong. So if you buy that and scale in, you can at least get outbreak even. This is a bad short and it's also a bad buy. So you shouldn't do anything here. You might be able to sell above the high of the bar, but that's probably not a very good idea because you're so far from the moving average. Then you get a strong bar. If you buy that, it has follow through. Don't do anything on this bar. Maybe take profits or whatever, but or you can hold your position, but don't buy this bar. Bar six is a relatively strong bar. It's the second degree based on our strength. 
So if you remember, light greens are the ones with very small tail. Uh, dark greens are the second degree. So they're still closing above 75% of the range of the bar, but they have a small upper tail. So this had followed through, this one had followed through, and this is right at resistance, which is not a good idea to just buy it right below the resistance. You also fact factor in other things because this is up, pause, up, pause, up, so three pushes, but micro channel and a lot of time control. Market's been going up for six or seven bars here. So there's a lot of time control with price control. That's good for the bull case and bad for the bear case. Bears get a strong bear bar, second degree, because if it is first, like this one, it's going to be red. It had followed through. Oh, sorry, this is a reversal bar because the color is lighter. Bear reversal, light red, right? So that's, this is light red. So this is a bear reversal, but it is a strong. Because if the reversal bar is not as strong, it would not be painted. So this partially works for both sides. You see this tail, okay to buy, okay to sell, okay to sell because of the location and the strength of the bar, okay to buy because of the context. It's a breakout. Breakouts usually have small pullbacks. This bar had you sold, market let you get outbreak even, then do nothing here. This is, this could be the second buy because we went above the high and then reversed. Buy that, sit through that pullback, okay, for a scalp. This one fails, 18. Strong bear bar, but body is small. So you have to reverse on that bar. Profitable, profitable, hold, try to get out. Buy again, this one is not three legs up, so not a good buy. If you sell here, small profit, but then you have to reverse here and then reverse here. So there's some choppiness in this area, but that is expected because you have three legs up and you need a two-legged correction. Uh, first reversal, second reversal, both strong. This is a good short. Reversal up, if you buy that, that's a micro channel. You might get a second leg. Pair of strong bars, this one is green, buy that. Now you might exit below this bar or just hold and put a bigger stop. If you sell, this is fairly strong trend turning into a small pullback trend. So location of the market above the moving average with the good slope, that is against the selling. So you need some kind of filter anyways. I mean, nothing is going to you know, be perfect on its own and work on its own. That, that is the value that the trader brings. You know, the cyborg is, is always more powerful than the human being and the computer alone. This is like three, so not very good. Also big, small, big. Uh, good for a correction though, sell. You either hold through this or get out and then look for another sell. And here's the second one. painted this color. Reversal up. Now you have three legs down with a good signal bar, inside bar, follow through, follow through. At some point you have to buy. This is against the third leg, up, pause, up, pause, up and a strong reversal, second bar, but very tight channel. So you need probably more than one bar to sell. Here's your follow through bar, you can sell that. And then this is the opposite. So you need more than one bar to buy. You need two failures and you need the second bar to close above the high or at least be strong like this one. So you see most of them actually work or at least prevent you from taking the absolutely stupid trades just by a simple measurement of the tape.